I'm changing my schedule slightly. I've decided on Fridays I will now be reviewing Collected Editions. And today I am looking at Marvel's Beyonds. And the first thing I'm going to do, because it is a nice oversized hardcover, I am going to remove the dust jacket because they look great without them. This story is a sequel to the original Secret Wars from the 80s. And there is the Watcherman there. And here are the credits if you want to take a look. Uh, two red flags straight away. Aubrey Citizen and Tom Bevo. And we'll actually come back to this piece of shit later on in the story. The plot of this one is much in the vein of the original story. The Beyonder Man has gathered a group of heroes and villains and is forcing them to battle and compete in a contest. So this is our cast of characters. We've got Vemon, we've got Craven Man, we've got the Hoodie, we've got Wasp, we've got Spider Man, Medusa Woman, Gravity Man, Hank Gordon, and this character is the one Kurt Busey refers to as the Annoying Christian. And this shadow up here is my dog Wendell. There he is. Say hello to YouTube, Wendell. I always like to let him in from time to time because he helps out with the YouTube views. We start off the story and someone is burying some bodies. It is an old Hulk baddie, one of the scrolls, one of the Kree. And then on the next page we see it's like a whole battle zone. And there are loads of graves. And this is the bloke that has been digging them. Then we start setting up Gravity Man. He is at school with his girlfriend and then he goes fights the supervillain and then on his way home he sees in Central Park this thing and this is straight from the original Secret Wars. He goes to investigate and he is transported to a spaceship with the other contestants and it is a good set of characters and they're all written really well actually. But I do feel like there is something missing. It seems that, well, there are three members of the Avengers here. And the, it sticks out that there isn't really one of the excellent men there or one of the Fantastic Force. Uh, maybe they could have had the Invisible Girl in this because she wasn't in the original Secret Wars. She was left behind on Earth. So it would be a good little nod to have her in, in this one. And the excellent men, that seems like a really weird oversight. And I was thinking what character they could have put in this. And I've got a perfect suggestion. They could have had X-32 in this. Uh, she she was a f recently new character at the time. So she doesn't have any like relationships with these characters. And then one issue, the big selling point, could be that you could have X-32 fighting Vemon. And that would like really help sell it. The other thing I noticed is that there isn't really enough villains. There's really only one outright villain, Vemon. Craven Man and the Hoodie, they are both more anti-heroes. And they're pretty quick to ally with the heroes. Uh, they really needed, in my opinion, another villain like Vemon. Maybe, I don't know, Loki or someone like that. And then... What happens, much like in the original story again, the Beyonder Man gives this speech. I am from beyond. Slay your enemies and all you desire shall be yours. Nothing you dream of is impossible for me to accomplish. And the thing is, since most of the people he's gathered are heroes, none of them really want to slay each other. One of the hoodie, he's okay, he, he wants to do that, but he's quickly defeated by Craven Man, so he changes his tune. But Vemon, since he's the only villain, he's trying to kill Spider-Man. And then, this is a surprise to everyone, next page, he does kill Spider-Man. He impales him on his tail, because this is the second Vemon. This is Scorpion Man, when he had the symbiote. And this was like a big shocking cliffhanger. And Spider-Man's down, he's like, Gotta talk, gotta tell you one last thing, Mary Jane. I love you. Because he thinks this is Mary Jane because of the red hair. And we end with Spider-Man dead and Vemon having killed him. And now Medusa Woman wants revenge. And there's the cover for the next one with Vemon. He's got Spider-Man's hand in his mouth. And we start off this one with this big fight between Medusa Woman and Vemon. And it's really good showing for Medusa Woman. And even even the hoodie, who's who's quite immoral, he, 
He's against Vemon for killing Spider-Man. And then they decide Medusa Woman is going to use the Inhumans uh, laws where he is going to be lashed 50 times as punishment. So she is whipping, holding him down with her hair and whipping him. And here, this is really good. The annoying Christian says, should we let her do this? And then the wasp, the wasp says, it feels wrong, but I don't know if we could stop her if we wanted to. Then Craven Man says, Spider-Man was my friend. Vemon's got this coming and plenty more. But then Hank Gordon, and he has written the best he has ever been written in this whole story. He's, he's interjecting and saying, no, we can't let this continue. He's extremely vulnerable to sonic attacks. So at the moment of impact, her hair is traveling faster than Mac 2. Bad enough, but the loop traveling within her hair is delivering a sonic boom directly into his body. So Hank Gordon stops her from doing it, and Vemon uses this as a chance to escape. And then the rest of the heroes, they're in the spaceship, and the spaceship crashes on Battleworld. And once they're there, Hank Gordon, he has got a first aid kit shrunk in his pockets. And I really like this element of Hank Gordon. It was something that... Uh, Jason Burns started doing in the Avengers where he would just have like arsenals of stuff shrunk in his pockets and he starts treating them for their wounds and then uh, the spaceship they're in ex is getting ready to explode but Gravity Man goes inside to get Spider-Man's body and they're talking about burying it but then Craven Man senses someone there and it's the bloke from the start who was digging the graves and it turns out he was he was one of the contestants in one of the piano man's previous contests and uh hank gordon he has an avengers jet shrunk in his pocket so they all get in that and then they get attacked by the dragon man this is another person from one of the previous one of the previous uh, experiments one of the contests so they're fighting the dragon man and during this spider-man wakes up and he starts limping away and then we find out this fella who he really is this is like his civilian identity and he is really death clock the cyborg and there's another cover good cover of this for death clock so Death Clock is fighting the Dragon Man, as are the other heroes, and they eventually beat him. And then, uh, well, actually, uh, the annoying Christian, probably much to Kurt Busey's uh, chagrin, she shows up and uses her fire to beat him. And then we start to learn all about how uh, how these contests have been going on for a while, and the Avengers and people like that, they just don't know about it. And during this, Hoodie and Gravity Man start bonding. And uh, we, uh, hello, it's Wendell. He's back for some more attention. Who's a good little, who's a good little boy? Uh, we get Death Clock's origin there, and then we see this was the experiment that he was part of, and we never get to see any more of it beyond this one panel. But it would be a good like if they did a little mini series of like an untold tale with this story here, because it is an interesting set of characters. We've got Sleepwalker Man. Captain Marbles, the real one, Monica Rambeau, Terror Man, a Dracula, Dark Hawk Man, Death Clock, Cold Steel Man, and this one is Wonder Man. In the nineties, when he transitioned, when she, when it was Wonder Woman, when she transitioned, uh, then Craven Man, he senses something else, so he goes looking and. He finds the half-dead Spider-Man. And it's here when he and the hoodie, they confront the, the Spider-Man. And it turns out it isn't Spider-Man. It is the Space Phantom, an old villain from the Avengers. And this is pretty much, this is interestingly, his only appearance since Kurt Busey completely retooled the character. <laughs> I know which comic I am going to be reviewing on Tuesday. So we have got the Space Phantom and his power is that he can pretend to be other people. He like abducts them and sends them to a limbo dimension and then he appears as them. And they're all surprised that it isn't Spider-Man. So they start fighting the Space Phantom and then he becomes uh, Zemnu Man. And this is a really cool villain, Zemnu Man. So now they're fighting Zemnu Man and it is really good fight. The art is really good in this story. It's by... Uh, it's by Scott Collins. He is a well-known artist. 
uh, sort of fighting Zemu Man, and then the re uh, Zemu Man transforms into North Man, my favourite member of the Alpha Strike. And it is a shame, I just realised, he would have been a really good character to have on this, like, assemblage of heroes, because he is not only an excellent main character, but he is also Canadian. So it, he would have been a really interesting one to have. And he uses Northman's speed to speed away. But this bit is more good Hank Gordon because he has got this, uh, he has shrunk a little portal to Limbo in his pocket. And one of the good things, uh, they go into the portal, they go into Limbo, and one of the good things about the way they're writing Hank Gordon in this is they're not dwe they're not just dwelling on that time that he hit his wife. They are actually wanting to ta kind of resolve that. And it's really well written. We've got... Uh, but then Vemon destroys the portal, trapping them all in Limbo. And there's another good cover there. Uh, so they are in Limbo, and it's here we get some downtime, really. Uh... The Wasp starts arguing with Hank Gordon, and uh, then we get this real good character moment here with Hank Gordon. Uh, he's like, don't you ever get sick of me whining to you? Because there was a story in the 80s where Hank Gordon tried to kill himself, and the annoying Christian walked in and then pretty much talked him out of killing himself. And she's like, no, you're a good friend and an outstanding man. I wish you'd tell her, he's talking about his ex-wife, the Wasp, she already knows. It's time for you to let this go, Hank. You're both good people. We're just not good for each other. It's okay. And then the hug, and he says, I don't want anyone to see me cry. I'm tired of looking weak. You aren't weak. You're the strongest man I know. Strong enough to do what you have to do to move on with your life. Really good, that. And then we've got the opposite end of this, where the Wasp is talking to Medusa Woman about how how she has forgiven him, but she also can't forgive him. It's really, it's really good because it isn't like, it shows like how in, the internal conflict of a woman that was once hit by her husband and how even though he has proven himself that he isn't that person anymore and stuff like that, she still like, she holds it against him, but she knows that it's kind of like, unfair to hold that against him uh this we've got stuff here like he only did it once he wasn't himself when it happened he's apologized a thousand times but why should i forgive him he hit me it's it, it's not fair to him though we've been divorced for years and he's still following me around trying to prove his worth i'm ruining his life i should let him go so we can move both move on it's really good. This it really makes her into it. Sure, it's it, a lot of people just go back to this story and they just harp on it to make a big point, saying, "Oh, wife beater, how evil!" But I feel this story is really carefully considerate and trying to make both characters grow to a point where it doesn't really have to come up again. And then uh, Hank Gordon starts starts gobbing on with the uh, annoying Christian. And Vemon, he starts fighting the Space Phantom, uh, who is disguised as Northman. And uh, Space Phantom goes to Limbo, and the heroes capture him, and they force him to transport them back to the real world. And then the Watcher Man shows up. And it's here where, out of the blue, Hank Gordon suddenly turns on all his friends. He starts shooting them all dead. And Craven Man tries to fight him, but the annoying Christian... Uh, saves Hank Gordon, then Hank Gordon just shoots them both, and he's like, game over. And this is the cover to the final issue, a good cover. Uh, so we begin, the Watcher Man, he is still there, and now that Hank Gordon has killed everyone else, the Beyonder Man shows up, and he's asking what Hank Gordon wants, and Hank says, let's just stick with tradition, three wishes. Uh, his first wish is he wants to be returned to Earth. His second wish is he wants to know who this really is because he has cottoned on that this isn't the Beyonder Man because the Beyonder Man is meant to be dead and all-knowing and omniscient and stuff like that. So he's like, who are you? And it turns out it's Santa Claus. And then we get this flashback here to the original story. And what I like about this is they have actually, this is like the cover to issue number one, but the artist has actually put in the characters that were left off the cover, like, Dr. X and I think Mr. Fantastics and four. Uh, although I will, 
Hawkeye from MASH is in the wrong costume. And, and Captain Marvel's, both the times she's appeared, they have given her white pants, but they're meant to be black. So we learn that he is copying the Beyond a Man's experiment because he wants to learn what's so special about humanity. And Hank Gordon's third wish is that he never performs these experiments again. And he refuses that, and then he starts cutting on himself. He says, why isn't your third wish to bring back those people you've killed? And it turns out he didn't kill them. He shrunk them down and made it look like they had been killed. But he didn't even tell Craven Man and the hoodie that this was his plan. So now all the heroes are assembled, and they are going to fight Santa Claus. And it's a big fight, and... But they ultimately win it by uh, logic. They say that the reason that the Watcher Man has shown up is because the Santa Claus is destined to lose this fight. So he is here to observe that. So he, he just kind of like admits defeat and lets them back to Earth. But in the process, Gravity Man has died. And it's quite sad. And then we have his funeral and... It's nice here, we saw the hoodie and him bonding and now the hoodie is comforting his girlfriend. He's like, he was a great guy and he loved you with all his heart. You're all he talked about. And then there's this bloke in the, in the shadows and uh, the wasp is like, Vemon's here, hiding behind those trees over there. And Craven Man's like, I know, let me handle it. You're not fooling anyone, Vemon. We all know who you are. And Vemon's like, I figured I'd just come to pay my respects. He saved my life too. You're a piece of crap, Vemon. I'm a grieving piece of crap. So they all say goodbye to Gravity Man. And even the Watcher Man came to his funeral. And Gravity Man did come back to life after this. Uh, and this is where Tom Bevort comes into it. As I said, Hank Gordon was written really, really well in this. There's another bit that I want to find. Uh, and the thing is, a lot of people, one of the one of the big praises of this book was how well written Hank Gordon had been. And Tom Beaver decided to turn around and say that this wasn't Hank Gordon, that it was a scroll impersonating him. So he completely removed what was possibly one of the one of the most mature and best examples of character growth for him. And uh, just so that they could go back to telling the same old stories about how, how evil wife beaters are and how he used to hit his wife and stuff like that. I can't find the bit I'm looking for, unfortunately. I missed it first time. Ah, here it is. Uh, that's, that's very convenient. We haven't really talked since London. Nothing to talk about. We tried and it still doesn't work. Too much history. I don't believe that. What I did to you was unforgivable. Hank, but it was a long time ago. That's not who I am anymore. I've spent years working to become a man who's worthy of you. You'll see. Like, this is really, really good. And this was a new design for him as well. It kind of harkened back to the to the Jason Byrne days when he would walk around with stuff in his pockets. Uh, this design was discarded straight away. Much as the entire character work here, it wasn't him. It was a scroll, according to Tom Beaver. But back, back to the back of the book, we've got some bonuses. Cover sketches here, and then original art for some of the covers. And without all the colouring and the inks, it really highlights how good an artist Scott Collins is. And then we have got this, which is model sheets for the characters in. I really like stuff like this. They're good references for, like, artists. So if you're, like, making, like you're making a custom action figure or something, it's really good. So there's the annoying Christian, her new design. I think the stop with this design for her. This is Medusa Woman, her new design. They discarded this straight away. Then we have got Death Clock there. Uh, it's pretty much his old design, really, but... It's a good little model sheet for him there. And there we've got Vemon, but they've forgotten to put on the tail, actually. And then we have got... Oh, nothing. Uh, I was hoping they would have one of Hank Gordon, because, as I said, it's a design that never appeared again, so it would have been good to see that at the back. Anyway, this is a good little story. It's a good collected edition. It's fun. As I said, it's got really good writing. It's got good character work. Spider-Man being up front and centre is a real... Like a real tease. He's not in the story. It's the Space Phantom. But I'm not going to rate it down for that. Because it is a good story. Good moments for Hank Gordon. 
Good moments for Gravity Man, good moments for the annoying Christian, a good moment for Medusa Woman when she fought Vemon, uh, some really good stuff for the hoodie, and unfortunately that was discarded as well by Tom B. Vought. After this, he just made the hoodie into an outright villain. Uh, this is the only time this Craven Man is interesting. Uh, the Wasp, we had good moments for her, and Vemon, we had, uh, he was kind of like a villain. We had some good bits with him, like when he killed the fake Spider-Man or when he was fighting the Space Phantom. And Death Clock, he's not on a cover. We had good moments for him as well. I rate this story, Beyond's, seven thumbs up. It is good. I think you should read it.